Welcome again to It Doesn't Take a Genius, conversation with introspective perspectives and pithy points of view. Here are your hosts, my friends, Max and Marty. I think that's Mark and Mike. Yeah, whatever. Ramsey! Marshall and Marshall. For, for those of you not seeing my background and you're just listening to this, I, I've decided in tribute to my co-host, I have a just a, a picture of him in the background, and he appears to be standing on my shoulder like some kind of wee elfin conscience. That's yes. the way I like to think of you anyway. It's like the a leprechaun that's the bad devil, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Whispering like, here's what we're going to do, and it's really not good. <laughs> well, and it's that's that's a perfect segue because it's the exact opposite of what I've experienced with you. And I just told you, I think we ought to, make this a podcast episode because it's so practical for people who have direct reports um i so here's the here's what happened is i basically had a, a, a homeowner situation as usual i am clueless it had to do with plaster it scared me i thought hey you know who i should talk to mike marshall and mike immediately had the solution the quick easy solution as well and uh, I was like, wow, you know, we, you should have a podcast where you just give homeowner advice. And he and you said, what, I, you, you didn't you didn't want to know all this stuff, but you kind of had to. Is that how you put it? Right. Well, two things. One is I, I could not have a home remodel show unless it was on HBO because of the language. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's that. Uh, the other thing is the, the I told you that, yes, I can fix anything, but I never wanted to be that guy, right? It was, it was a matter of growing up in, in you know, less than ideal financial circumstances. Yeah. And uh, if you wanted something done, you just had to do it, whether, yeah. you, whether you knew how or not. And uh, you had a story about your mom and a, and a breakfast situation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm like seven years old. I come downstairs. We did have bread. Uh, you know, we'd have <laughs> bread and gravy. And then sometimes we'd have gravy with bread. You know, sometimes gravy bread. And then you get that little processed pack of chip beef. You know, that was you know special days. And so I come downstairs one day and mom says, you want toast? And I'm like, yeah. She goes, great. Fix the toaster. She just hands me the toaster. I'm like, I, 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 I want breakfast, not a class in small appliance repair. And she goes, that's, that's how it is. And so you I, get both. <laughs> yeah. I took the toaster, I put it all back together, got it working and got toast. Yeah. Wasn't my intention for the morning, but from that point forward, I knew I could fix toasters. You, you can now fix toasters. Well, so to me, the connection here is with a conversation we often have with managers, which is um, this, this real temptation to just say, I'll just do it myself. It'll, I, I know it'll get done right. I know it'll be faster. Uh, I won't have a mess to clean up after it's over. And at the same time, they're telling us, I have too much to do. I am overloaded. I need help. I need to delegate. But I don't have anybody I can delegate to. I'll just do it myself. And, and that, now you see how the cycle starts back up again. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, Mike, I, I mean, do you resonate with that? I feel like we have this conversation about um, needing to help people help themselves. Oh, yeah. Well, and you're seeing it now with, with uh, the, the employee shortage, staffing yep. shortages, things like that. So, so every job that's not being the, the, that's, that's mission critical, that's not getting done by an employee, there's a manager picking up that slack. Yep. And, and for some of the companies we work with, it's been an absolute godsend because we see managers quitting their jobs and taking on jobs that, that require less responsibility because they've, yeah. they've, they've burned themselves out. Yeah. And so this gets to uh, the, the idea of delegation, but they also the opportunity for uh, what we see is one of the reasons employees leave is it's usually in the top five. It's a lot of times it's number three is People, you know, the place where I'm working isn't working hard enough to grow and develop me. Yep. And so I don't see myself growing here. I don't see them investing in me. Therefore, I'm going to go look for other opportunities. 
And so looking at it is from twofold, right? One is I need to get some, some tasks off my plate uh, so that I'm freed up to, to, to lead and coach and strategize and, and, and look for new opportunities for my, my, my business or department. The other is I need to develop my bench strength. I need people around me who can do these things and it would be the next logical step in their development. That's right. And, That's and right. so, you know, uh, talk to a manager the other day and, and he stays late every night. I said, yeah. So how many of your, your team members stay late with you? I've never asked them to. Mm -hmm. Like, do you have people who, who are as committed to this as you are? Oh yeah. My, you know, I got some guys who are all in. Is there things that if they learn them, they would be uh, better employees, but also would raise their value to the organization? Sure. Definitely. Uh, all right. So then let's, well, let's pick one of these things that, that's keeping you here late and, 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 and let's figure out how to not abdicate it, but to delegate it. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that's the key is, is we're not giving up here. We're not turning over the you know, keys to the store and saying, you know, we, we quit, we're saying we want to grow our bench. And if you see it from the employee perspective, you know, I've, I've heard uh, complaints about, uh, you know, millennials are, are just so ambitious, but they don't have any skills and they want to be a manager immediately. And they've only been here for 30 days. Okay. I, I know that that, you know, is, is part of the ecosystem for sure. Uh, but Think about it from the flip side. Uh, there are a bunch of people who want to do a good job, who want to stay with the organization, who want to climb the ranks. They don't know how to. Uh, so uh, these are people who are asking for coaching. Uh, you know, again and again, we see in studies uh, that uh, millennials uh, value coaching in the in the workplace. Um, so you know, we've got to get better about that. But what better way than you know, the live fire exercise of uh, giving somebody some real world experience to, to grow their skills. And then you coach after the fact on what went well, what didn't, what they could do different the next time. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's it. That's the episode. That's the podcast. There's really nothing more to it in th than just that nugget of, uh, you know, people can't develop unless we let them develop. Um, but uh, any, any more thoughts from you, Mike? Well, I think the, the number one thing that we hear the managers say, and I've, I've heard myself say it is, it's just faster if I do it myself. Yeah. And you have to admit that that is the reality. It That's is true. faster to do it yourself. Yep. And so, so coming to terms with that and knowing that, that what you're about to make as far as the expenditure of time is an investment. Yeah. And so you're looking for a payoff on this investment over time. So if I, if I can teach the employee to do this, it's going to take longer, right? They're yeah. going to make mistakes and it's okay. That's how you learn to do it. However, what I hope to get back as a return on that investment is all the time that I spent on that task, I get back to me for as long as that employee is in that position. Yep. And so I might, I might spend some additional time. It might spend an additional time for a two week period. And then lo and behold, I get three years worth of that task off my plate. That's right incredible return on investment. So, yeah. so we're not denying it will take longer, it will go slower, and there will be mistakes. Uh, but the long view is that there is a return on that investment. Yeah. And, and the last thing I'll tell you is that you, if you're trying to do everything yourself as a leader, you ultimately become the bottleneck to your department's growth. You become the ceiling for it. So when you maxed out, now your yep. department is maxed out. That's right. And if you're truly going to grow this thing, you have to grow not only your team, uh, but the capabilities of your team. Yeah. And so, so at some point, you don't want to hear this, but you're going to be the problem. Yeah. And all of these negative things, it's, it's pay now or pay later. You know, right. uh, you're, you're in pain right now. It's going to be more pain to develop these people. But, you know, that pain now is going to alleviate the pain later. So um, and, it, and that's a, it's, it's a better payoff, as you pointed out, it's an actual investment. Mm -hmm. Great stuff. So, yeah, th look at this in two ways. One is think about something that you could delegate and get off your plate. But more importantly, think about somebody who's on your team, and what's the next thing they need to learn in yeah. order to grow, great, and, and help them get to their goals. Uh, completely different mindset. One is, you know, is, is I'm getting rid of something, the other is I'm helping somebody to grow.
Love that. Okay. Um, so we'll put a pin in it there. Uh, just, just a quick one that we felt like was uh, timely and uh, wanted to get it in front of you. Hopefully you can sit down and think through your direct reports and uh, what could be opportunities for each of them, have some conversations with them about it, you might even coach around it. And uh, we've done some podcasts about that concept. But uh, we, uh, as always, appreciate uh, those of you listening and uh, send us your ideas hit like subscribe i don't know what you say at the end we, we never do this right but you know we, we, we hope you keep listening anyway point being we'll let uh our favorite uh voiceover artist i think i think we can both say this let's let him talk mr john wolf take it away and that's it join us next time when you'll hear mike say well i'm sure he'll say something pithy don't miss it next time It doesn't take a genius. That's good enough.